Hi, I am Robert Nemo and I'm here to talk to you about a design pattern called the Publish Subscribe Pattern. It is a messaging pattern. So we're, the main basic setup is going to be you have a sender, you have a receiver, and the sender wants to send the receiver a message. Um, and this design pattern is going to show us a way that is a, a design that is modular and scalable. So let's get started. <coughs> So one of the problems with uh, basic designs where you just have sender sending specific receivers um, messages is that what if the sender doesn't know who the receivers are? That's what this first question is asking. What, <clears throat> how can you set up an application such that the sending applications can just send these messages without knowing the receivers? Um, you can't, you obviously can't do it in this way where, you, where you'd have a sender sending it to receiver one, two, three, because you have to know the receivers in that case. Um, this design, of course, is tight coupling, which is kind of bad design by the uh, just principle um, because it's not, <clears throat> it's not modular and it's just not scalable. Like if you want to increase the number of senders, you have to go right into your program and manually do this kind of stuff. So the solution to this is to extend the communication infrastructure by including a topic for each message. So this is kind of a tag or a subject of each message. And every publisher has to tag a message with this topic, with a specific topic. Um, and through this topic, the listening applications can listen to specific topics. So if you want to listen to topics only about a certain sport, like basketball or something, you can subscribe to basketball messages. And you will get all messages uh, like corresponding to basketball. Um, and the way you do this is you have to create a mechanism or middleman that uh, sends the messages to all interested receivers. So this is kind of abstraction for the publishers and subscribers. Publisher just kind of throws this message into a black box and this black box spits it out to the right subscribers. Subscribers don't know who it came from, they just know the topic that they're receiving. Um, so the actors in the PubSub are publishers, subscribers, and PubSub server. Uh, the publishers are sender applications that need to tag each message with a topic. Once they tag their message, they can send it to the PubSub pub server. Um, subscribers are receiving applications that choose which topics to receive. Um, important, it's important to note that subscribers can also subscribe to multiple um, channels or topics. In the PubSub server, um, I call it a server, but it's really just a middleman or a director of all these messages and it defines a uniform message structure. <clears throat> so this is the, this is a very basic um, pub sub class diagram, the UML design. The first thing to note is that it's pretty simple, um, and this one actually corresponds directly to the uh, demo I'm going to present. Um, and here we have basically just a, you have publishers, and they're going to send the message to the pub sub server. Pub sub server will catalog these into a queue. Um, it doesn't have to be a queue, but for um, practical purposes. I assume that you would probably want it as a queue, uh, kind of like a first come first serve thing. And I store those in as a buffer. Um, then the message, uh, the PubSub server will then go through the queue of the messages and send each message to the corresponding subscriber. Uh, um, so the server also needs to catalog the subscribers that are subscribing to certain topics. And it also has a function or method called forward. Um, you can, again, you can name these whatever you want. I just called it forward. In, in my uh, understanding or my interpretation, the publishers would kind of send it to the server and the server would then forward that message to the subscriber. <clears throat> so moving on to the subscribers, they need to, um, each subscriber needs to keep track of the topics that it wants to subscribe to. I stored those as a string. It's pr or as a string array. Uh, it's probably better to store those as a vector or some other dynamic uh, storage, basically. 
because you never know how many you're going to subscribe to, but I just kind of restricted it just for simplicity. Uh, and then you also have a queue of messages that you have received. This is also kind of like the buffer, but uh, I didn't want to confuse it. You could. This is also kind of an optional, because uh, there's, there's a lot of customization you can do here. So subscribers, um, this is just all the messages that you have received, but you could also do it where you have a queue of red or, or not read yet, not yet read messages, or you could have, and you could have a queue of red messages already, kind of like an email system, where you, you have some that are marked red and some that are not read yet. <clears throat> so subscribers, um, I, in this uh, example, I let them listen. So listen is um, their method for telling the program that they want to listen to a certain topic. And then they insert that to the index of topics. It's again because I made it an array instead of a vector, like a list. And then they have a, or a method uh, print, which just prints out your the messages that you've received and the topics that they are from. So in this, in my example that I'm going to show you, I have the I have a dog publisher, a cat publisher, and then I have an animal lover and an old cat lady. The animal lover. Um, wants messages about all animals so they're going to subscribe to the dog and the cat topics the old cat lady doesn't care about dogs she only likes cats so she's going to subscribe only to the cat publisher and this is going to show you that some subscribers can subscribe to multiple class or multiple um topics and then some can just subscribe to only one so let's go to the demo real quick so this is our uh, header class or header file um, we have, again, we just have the publisher. Again, it co directly corresponds to the class diagram. Uh, you're just, you're going to have just a send, and all you do is you uh, in queue. When, so you, when you want to send your message, you have to send it to the server, and you have to have a message that you want to send. So when you pass in the server, you know what server it's going to, and you, you in queue into the buffer your message very simple um, like I said it's a very simple program it's very it's highly customizable and high, highly modifiable I encourage you to do that if you want to use this pattern in any practical purpose <clears throat> moving on to so the, the subscriber class we have the again I just have the I just have like normal constructors here they're not really doing anything at all um, so again we have the topics I restrict them to two just because uh, there's only going to be two topics here. Uh, just for simplicity again, you're going to have the queue of your messages. And you're going to have avoid uh, method listen. Again, this just uh, tells the uh, program that, oh, I want to listen to certain topics. And then you have your print method. Uh, this just prints out, uh, here I'll just show you. So you, you do right line topic so this is the next part is going to be the topic that you got it from and then we do a new line and then you say the payload the payload is the actual message message payload kind of like if you were to get it from a packet right so you could also do this for uh, some kind of networking protocols uh, I made the message a class that you could also do a structure it doesn't it doesn't really matter but if you uh, Generally speaking, if you want to have a message that maybe has methods or something or other attributes, you, you can make it a class. <clears throat> and then you have the PubSub server where all the magic happens. You're going to have your buffer of messages, you're going to have a list of your subscribers, and you have your forward function that goes down here. So let's walk through the forward function or forward method. So first thing you want, the first condition we want to check is while the buffer is not empty. Um, if the buffer is empty, then why even go through these other steps? Basically, um, so if there's stuff in the buffer, we're going to send, we're going to set a temporary message to the front of the buffer, and we're going to pop that um, first uh, first item in the buffer, and then we're going to iterate through the subscribers and we're going to iterate through the subscribers topics because each subscriber is going to have their own topics uh, right up here again so for each subscriber we're going to iterate through their topics and we're going to check if the topic of this temporary message 
So if the topic of the front of the buffer in the pub sub server is the same as this current subscriber's topic, we're going to give them that message. So if you remember, the subscriber, each subscriber has a list of their own messages, and they have a queue of their own messages as well. And we're gonna enqueue this temporary message, or it's not really a temporary message, it's the front of this buffer in the PubSub server. So we're basically just transporting the message from the PubSub server to the subscriber. And that's all is in the header. And this is our uh, main, all this. Um, it's, again, this, it's, I just wanted to make this simple and intuitive when you go through it. Um, so what we've got here is I set up some standard stuff that you need to set up. Make your dog publisher, cat publisher, animal lover, old cat lady, and your server. And then, <clears throat> so it's, again, they're just setting up two publishers, two subscribers, your server. And then you're gonna, we just manually make the messages instead of like real like live runtime uh, collecting messages and stuff like that. So after we make the messages, we these are the messages from the publishers. We send both those messages to the server, server collects these messages and catalogs them. Um, so then we uh, go to the uh, subscribers and we say what we wanna listen to. So Animal Lover wants to listen to dogs on index zero. Um, the index zero is just, again, because we have uh, we have our topics as an array. You have to specify the index, just in my example, uh, to make it simple. And then Animal Lover, since they like all animals, they're going to also subscribe to cats. Old Cat Lady only subscribes to cats. And here we say the subscribers, we let the server know who the subscribers are. Um, so the first one that we enter in is Animal Lover, second one's Old Cat Lady. This is important because when we forward the, the when we go to the forward uh, method here, it's gonna go through the subscribers and uh, match their topics with the topics of the messages the server has received. Um, after So after we forward, every subscriber should have their messages. And we can print this stuff out. So let's see how it works again, these uh, the messages that they receive are just going to be uh, from dogs. Dogs are man's best friend. Cats, cats can take care of themselves. And we're just going to have basic things just to outline so you can follow with your eyes. Animal lover, subscribe to the following messages. Old cat lady, and subscribe to the following messages. So let's start this. So we see here, animal lover has subscribed to the following messages. Um, the topic was dogs. You get the message, dogs, man's best friend. Uh, you also got another one called, it was from cats, and they say cats can take care of themselves, interesting. And uh, old cat lady subscribed only to cats. And cats can take care of themselves. So really, this is, um again, this kind of a design pattern, pretty good for these features. Um, it is, again, it made modularity to the messaging system. Uh, each software component has clear responsibilities. Also, you can uh, you can test specific software components easier with this modularity feature. Um, it creates abstraction for senders and receivers. Senders and receivers don't have to know exactly what goes on behind the scenes. Um, it allows for control of how messages are distributed. Um, that lets, again, that's kind of part of the modularity thing. You can go right into PubSub server and say exactly how you want to control this. Uh, it's highly customizable to different scenarios. Like I said the whole time, that I just made a very simple <coughs> usage scenario, but you could, uh, you know, these things could be very diverse, and it's very highly scalable. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you have any questions, uh, just uh, you can email me or uh, leave a comment. Thanks.